Good day, Grid 8s, and welcome to our Worksheet Cloud Natural Sciences lesson. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. I am delighted that you're able to join our lesson today. If you are new to these series of lessons and this is your first time joining us, we are actually looking at creating a summary today. So I really encourage you to go back and have a look at all of our previous lessons because they build on all the work that we're going to cover and summarize today. And to those of you that are our regular listeners and viewers, you know that my name is Mrs. Ernston and I'm the Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences teacher. And really, I'm so proud that you have joined our lesson today. Well done for your motivation and perseverance. So we're going to be building a summary on the particle model of matter. So you definitely do need pens and paper ready. And we will build this as we go on. And you'll probably find that you'll need two A4 pages. It's going to be quite a nice big summary. And you will be able to study from your tests and exams using this summary. So by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to have everything all nice and neatly linking up. So if we look at the particle model of matter, we looked at the fact that there were three states of matter and we had solid and liquid and a gas. And just to recap, that in solids, the particles are closely packed in a regular arrangement. The particles do not move, they only vibrate. There are very strong forces between the particles and there are very small spaces between the particles. In a liquid, the particles are loosely arranged but still close together. The particles can move quite fast and they can slide past each other. There are strong forces between the particles but they are weaker when compared to a solid. And there are small spaces between the particles. And then when we look at a gas, there's no particular arrangement of particles. The particles are free to move. The particles do move very fast. They are in constant motion. There are very, very, very weak forces between the particles. And the particles are far apart with very big spaces between them. If we have a look at the particle model of matter, we can see what happens when we add energy to a solid. And when we add energy to a solid, it undergoes a process known as melting and it changes phase to a liquid. And when we add energy to a liquid, it goes through a boiling or phase of evaporation and it turns into a gas. It is also possible for a solid to turn directly into a gas via a process known as sublimation. We can also have a look at the three phases and states of matter and we can see what happens when we remove energy. So when we have a gas, if we move energy and cool it down, a gas... So when we have a look at a gas and we remove energy, it goes through a process of condensation and it will cool and change its state into a liquid. And then if we continue to remove energy, the liquid will be converted into a solid and the process there is freezing. So when we have a look at the particle model of matter, we are referring to all matter. And matter is made up of particles. And particles can either be part of pure substances or mixtures. And what's very important is for you to go and have a look at the definitions of pure substances and mixtures and see if you are able to determine whether these pictures here are atoms, elements, compounds, molecules, mixtures, or pure substances.
When we look at these particles, the particles that make up all matter are microscopic and they are referred to as atoms. And we had a look at how atoms are made up of subatomic particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. And the protons and neutrons are clumped together in the nucleus of an atom and the electrons form a cloud around this atom. And then we also had a look at molecules and how atoms and molecules link together. Remember that the particles are still linked with the three states of matter. And if we continue with the particle model of matter, and it's made up of three states, then we can have a look at the density. And density is the amount of mass in a given volume. And the equation for density is density equals mass divided by volume. And if we have a look at density, and we have a look at the different states of matter in terms of a solid and a liquid and a gas, and we assume that they occupy the same volume, when we have a look at the mass, we have a look at how many particles occupy that volume. And obviously, when we keep the volume the same between the different states, and if we increase the mass, our density will also increase. So if we stay with the three states and we look at the descriptions of solids and liquids and gases we looked at earlier, it is also important to remember that both a liquid and a gas can diffuse. And diffusion is the movement of a substance from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. And if we continue looking at our three states of matter and we focus on a liquid, we can change the state of a liquid by heating or by cooling. And when we cool a liquid, it contracts. And when we heat a liquid, it expands. And you can see how when we have a look at heating and cooling, it links up with the particle model of matter. This change of state also applies to solids and gases. If we focus now on the gas, The gas can also change its volume. Or if we have a look at a container and it has a certain volume, the gas will occupy all the available space. And if we take a volume of gas and we put it into a larger container, but we keep the mass the same, the particles will just fill the larger container. So it is also important to remember that when we look at changing volume, this is still linked up with density and mass because the concepts of density and mass and volume still link up with the particles and the particle model of matter. So what happens if we take a gas and we change its volume? So if we have a greater volume, we have a lower pressure. But if we change the volume of a container, we have a higher pressure. And that is because of the air particles. When we have a larger volume, we have a decrease in the number of collisions. So if you have a look at the particles in this picture, they are colliding less than the particles in this picture. So decreased collisions 
cause us to have a decreased or lower pressure. And if we have a look at this picture, where we have reduced the volume, we have an increase in the number of collisions, and that means we have an increased pressure. And we can also observe this phenomenon when we blow up a balloon. If you have any questions, you can email your questions to graydates at worksheetcloud.com. With the time that's left for this lesson, I really do encourage you to go and have a look at the worksheet that's associated with this lesson. It is a wonderful summary table and it helps you link all these sections together. And it will form a nice study material for you to form in conjunction with the summary diagram that we've built today. To those that joined this lesson, please be reminded that this is a summary lesson. We have covered all the work summarized today in our previous lessons. So please head on over and work through our lessons. There's loads of exciting things to find there. And I know that you're going to learn a whole lot of new fun stuff. So grade eights, this lesson couldn't have happened if you weren't here to join us today. So thank you very much for your active participation in the lessons. And I would like to thank Worksheet Cloud for bringing the lesson to you today. So thanks very, very much for watching Grade 8s. Bye.